Full Tilt Odds is level headed, myself, uh, S Lev, my brother, uh, makes beats and kicks raps. Uh, DJ Sanchez is our DJ, and Mick Zagger's uh, the sound guy. Um, Jack Radford on guitar, uh, electric guitar, vocals, uh, Willie Metzer on piano, Chris Weber on trumpet, trombone, uh, a three piece string section. Uh, FTO's, you know, a difficult brand to describe because all the music's different. Um, but I think that just the diversity and the depth to which the music's now gone is, uh, it's just, it's just some unique, unique blend of hip hop and every other fucking type of music that has ever been done. And um, we like it. Hopefully, other people do as well. There's something organic about coming to Mix Masters. It's something uh, that sort of unveils this passion inside of you as far, as far as musically. I just love being here, uh, being in the hills where I grew up and making music in this place. I think it has, uh, it definitely has a vibe about it and um, I don't think I'd record anywhere else. Well, uh, on the last album, um, Place Your Bets, we did some live bass, uh, some extra acoustic guitar and some electric guitar. But that was about where the live instrument stopped. Um, the, the depth of this project is the addition of the horns and the strings and the keys. Um, it's getting done on the grand piano just through the door next to me and uh, it just sounds phenomenal. I think as a producer, the most challenging thing would have to be the fact that unlike a workplace where you have a boss, there's no one literally pushing you. So you have to wake up every day and try and push yourself to this level. Um, which is really, really hard and, and you, you'll use every single distraction under the sun to try and get out of doing you know, the, the tasks that you have to do. And um, it's only members like Level Headed and Sanchez that will call you and tell you to do stuff, um, but they're not going to push you like a boss is. So you have that constant fight of, of trying to motivate yourself, but in the end you know it's that final goal and that final product and all that hard work that's going to get you to that point um, which you need to be at. The, the music industry is a, a tricky, uh, tricky one. Um, it's not all that it seems. Um, I think if you get too caught up in the, the politics of it all, then you start going down the, uh, the wrong sort of path. You wanna just make music for the love of it, make music because you enjoy it, and really try and feed off of that, and then that, you'll get the best product you can get. Could we give Willie a bit more time just to start with the groove and build it up, and then we'll tell him when to bring it down. So, sweet. Put it on, buddy. You play better. <laughs> <laughs> he does play better with the, with the glasses on. I'm uh, Willie Metzer, I'm a piano player. It started uh, pretty much when I was in Texas in uh, 1986. Our family went over there and uh, Dad took us over to New Orleans and 
basically uh, learn how to improvise um, on a piano and would listen to birds uh, singing tunes and then just try and emulate them on a piano and eventually when you do that enough there's sort of common structures that happen within the, the music and then um, it sort of helps you when you're improvising as well so um, I've tried to bring that to the full tape odds. So. Yeah well, we met uh, Sammy and, and, and Tom um, primary school and I guess you know we basically met probably playing marbles and and as the years have gone on um, we've, we've hooked up in parties hooked up not as in in hooking up but hooking up as in a musical sense we've uh, hung out at some parties and had some pretty awesome times I remember one party in particular um, for some reason I had my accordion in the back of the car and um, we ended up um, pretty much just singing uh, drunken chanties all night which really was probably my my uh, introduction to hip-hop with Sam and uh, Tom, so, uh, and the Full Tote Boys. some film uh, clip locations for uh, a couple of weeks time we're gonna go pick up Jackie Radford it's, uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been a long slog we got started on this album as soon as our last one was finished in uh, October 2012 we finished place your bets we got straight into the chosen few so let me tell you about a little girl who's living off the banks and you on the a little bit, bit about yourself. Well, my name's Jack Radford. I've been a musician now for probably about five years. I suppose seriously, but I started playing guitar when I was about 14. And I'm now 21, so you know, it's been a while. But um, yeah, just love to write music, love to get involved with new people, meet new people, and, and feed from that, draw from that, and write music from that. And um, yeah, just collaborate really, that's, that's my big thing. I started working with FTO uh, back in 2011, we met. and uh, the first album, and then yeah, just show me a whole new face of hip hop. Having not been a fan or not even been involved in it you know, previously, I now really enjoy it. You know, respect it, and I've, uh, enjoyed working with Full Ted Odds immensely. It's been a great experience. Well, I think on the chosen few, uh, I'd probably feature it with a lot more guitar work as opposed to Place Your Bets, the previous album. But um, still the vocals there, and I think it's just, uh, I'd like to call it maybe a maturing, maturing of the, of the process. So, yeah. Uh, what was the one with the ba 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 that you queued up a second ago? Um, look to the sky. Look to the sky. Chris Weaver and I play trumpet and trombone and do all the string and brass arranging for the group. I started playing trumpet when I was about eight years old, which is quite some time ago now. And uh, yeah, now I, I teach trumpet and play trumpet for a living. So, you know, who would have thought? I, I think the teaching keeps me inspired because it um, brings me back to the joy of just when you're first learning and getting over the humps and mastering the instrument. I, um, some musicians don't like to teach, but I, I really get a lot from teaching the kids and I've got some great students who sort of inspire me every day and then I come back with a fresh approach. And then also just seeing better musicians than myself and I think, man, I've got a bit of work to do, you know, and just keep practicing. And then when you get to perform with other musicians, it's the collaboration and the sort of social aspect of it. It's just fantastic. So right now, I'm working quite a lot with the Shaolin Acronauts. Um, we just went over to Glastonbury Festival and stuff, which was great. Um, 
throughout my career. I've worked with various international artists. I worked with Carolyn Nin from France in the last Cabaret Festival, and I've worked with sort of other visiting artists in, during the Cabaret Fest and that sort of thing. And uh, my soul band, The Transatlantics, was a good fun one that we sort of did a bit of national touring. And I'm in a New Orleans uh, jazz sort of band called The Atlantic Street Band, which is also fun. So, pretty busy. The first project that I was involved in was Train of Thought uh, with the bait, the slats, forecast, hacksaw. Uh, 2002 we made a demo and 2004 we made an LP. Train of Thought was uh, pretty active from 2001 through 2005 and then uh, we basically broke up because some crew went overseas. I moved to the country uh, to teach and and yeah, dudes just got jobs, got busy. I originally started making acoustic music. We had uh, this group called The Messy Kids, which was a bit of a joke around. We made an album called It's Five O'Clock Somewhere. Bit of a fuck around, good fun, but never took it too seriously. Then, uh, yeah, about six or seven years ago, we started jamming with four of us, just making metal music, and I was rhyming over the metal music and absolutely loved it. But then um, the guys I was working with are incredibly talented, called Headbore. They were sort of going in a path of sort of more death metal. It wasn't really my flavour. These guys are incredibly talented, as I said, but um, that's when I sort of teamed up with Level Headed in sort of early 07 to 08 to put together the project uh, Spice of Life and got involved in a big way in that regard. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. My name's DJ Sanchez and I'm from Full Tide Odds. Started DJing probably in around 2001 and then started doing gigs in about 2005, 2006. I used to just learn from hearing dudes like Premier and then just trying to emulate what I'd hear. I hooked up with a dude, DJ Chronic, in like 2004 or five, I reckon. And he was a big influence, you know, he got me into clubs, he taught me certain tricks and got me into beat juggling and stuff like that. I don't know, it's fun. I like hip hop, I love hip hop, I live it. You know, like it's the only music I listen to, you know, whether in the car or just wherever I am. So I think just because I'm a fan of hip hop, it just naturally just keeps me going. So, so long as I like hip hop, which I doubt that will ever change, I'll always be DJing. Uh, my name would be Ross Reed, aka Mick Zagger. Don't really remember the name of the group that I'm working with. It's a hip hop act. Um, I think there's a guy named Sammy Savage Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> Worked with a group called Full Tote Odds. Met these guys, ooh, about four years ago, I think it was, give or take. Some bright spark came up to me with an idea and said, hey, look, I want to record a hip hop album. Wouldn't mind making a group. What do you think? I said, yeah, okay, it's got some merit. It's got some merit. Uh, I've been a sound engineer for approximately 12 years, give or take. I would have been about Ooh, five or six years old when I when I kind of figured that's what I wanted to do. I was lucky enough to grow up in a musician family. Um, my dad had played in bands for God knows how long, and I'd sort of as as a result of that I'd always been a part of that kind of scene. So I'd always been around music and and at gigs and and watching things happen. Let's say they had no idea what they were doing when it came to sound. They were doing pub gigs. They had a PA. Didn't really know how it works, so you know, from a very young age, I was put in front of that and said, "Here, go to work, do your thing, make us sound good." As I said before, you know, it's, it's a very big leap in maturity with the band individually and collectively, and also taking a step from a massive experimentation album where you just throw all these ideas in the deep end, and by the second album, you're kind of more comfortable with where you're at, and the language becomes clearer between the members. Obviously the closer it gets to the completion, the more exciting it is. And just looking forward to, you know, getting it out there, seeing what we can make of it, see how well received it is, and hopefully pick up some live shows and some tours off it. I mean, the lyrics speak to you. They're not just lyrics about sort of trivial things. It's about life. It's about what we're all experiencing in this day and age. And, and for me, that's, that is, man, that's meaningful. Have fun, enjoy yourself and make music because it's what makes you who you are and what you do and love it and that's what life's all about.
<laughs> in all honesty, I think it's actually going to be an amazing album. I think stylistically, at, at the moment, with what's going on in the music scene, I think it's uh, I think it's quite a groundbreaking album. I think it's actually going to it's it's enjoyable to listen to on a lot of different levels. Everyone from you know from teenagers through to through to their parents through to their grandparents is going to get something out of this album, and that's you know that's the dead set truth. <laughs>